Kenya is on the front line in the battle against climate change. Communities across Kenya are fighting a daily battle. <laughs> Intense heat waves are killing thousands. Prolonged droughts are destroying livelihoods. while people's homes sink into lakes and rivers. This is our encounter with those most affected. Their resilience in the face of a crisis. Ground zero is Lake Trukana. Angelina Wellbor and her family have lived in El Molo Bay for over 20 years now. They are in one of the worst hit villages along the shores of Lake Turkana. Rising water levels and land subsidence have forced families to relocate in search of higher grounds and the remaining ones have been cut off from the mainland. Komote village, her home, is now an island. Thirty years ago, the village of Komote sat several kilometers from the shoreline and homes were surrounded by neighbors and scattered trees. Now it is being swallowed by the lake. A huge part of the community land here has disappeared. Wakati huu maji ilikuja ime raise sana yani imekuja kama ni abnormal sio kawaida. Tumekuja maji imetufunga. Sasa sisi tumekuwa kama watu tumewekwa tu tumetengwa pahali. Sasa sisi tunakuwa tunajitegemea huku ndani. Biashara inakuwa ngumu. Transportation ya kutoka na kuingia inakuwa ngumu. Yani maisha inakuwa tu ngumu kwetu. Taya bahari tangu race pia maneno ya kuvua samaki imeenda shini sana. Uh, it used to be an accessible place from the mainland. Vehicles could take people there, motorbikes. But gradually there was some changes. There were some changes. The water level began to increase. And eventually the village was uh, cut off from the mainland. That plays us uh, several social amenities. We have a primary school, a Molo primary school. We have uh, the Molo dispensary. 
and we also have the church, the Catholic church around that place. Now, when the village was cut off, it meant that uh, people cannot easily access the place. It now implied that uh, boats should be used to cross over from the mainland to, to the island now. And this has, uh, has had an impact on the people socially and economically. The entire Loyangalani is windy, and so it makes crossing by boat a slow expedition. For school-going children, and for expectant and lactating mothers, the crossing must happen despite the risk of facing strong winds. Today, it's less windy, and these children are headed for school. <laughs> Aboard a motorboat. They sing in praise of Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. Most of them are Catholics. Sailing across wild waters by boat is their new way to school. It's not an easy ride for these young ones. With few boats available, overcrowding is not a choice, and the challenges are many. Uh, we face a problem with fuel. Uh, parents are forced to pay some amount of money uh, in order to buy fuel for these children to move from home to school. <laughs> And also, we have no enough boats to uh, transport these children from uh, school to home and home to school. Uh, and also, sometimes uh, this lake is dangerous at times uh, because of the waves. Uh, and therefore, we also don't have uh, uh, things like uh, life jackets. Almolo Primary School has not been spared either. Uh, what we are seeing here is uh, the fence. We fence the school, but now uh, it is now inside the, the water. So there is no more fence there. Mm -hmm. 
So we had a teacher's toilet here. So there are no more toilets because of the water. So uh, there is no more toilets. So that's why we uh, uh, constructed teacher's toilet somewhere else. Before uh, we had uh, toilets, enough toilets uh, for girls and uh, boys and also for teachers. But uh, due to uh, this increase in water, we had uh, all the toilets have been uh, carried away by water. So we have on this other side, we don't have a girls' toilet, we don't have uh, also boys' toilet, and also teachers' toilet. There are no more, and also teachers' bathroom. In the Kenyan Rift Valley, very warm waters and silty landscape means water levels are rising faster than the global average. Former inhabited islands have disappeared in the past few years and some villages have been cut off from the mainland. We are seeing this water is not uh, decreasing. It is increasing day by day. So we are also worried uh, about uh, the uh, boarding facility for girls because it's just near water. It's, the water is just next to the uh, boarding facility for girls. That is the dormitory for girls. So we have uh, been facing these challenges like toilets. Uh, right now we are also worried about the kitchen. Soon this water will come closer to the kitchen and then we will be having uh, those challenges in school. Lake Trukana is located in the Kenyan Rift Valley. It's supplied with water from Ethiopia's River Omo through its delta and the Takwal River in the south. It is the largest desert lake in the world. The lake is the source of livelihood for many inhabitants. This aging connection between water soil and the people have helped communities live through centuries. The seashore at Loyangalani in Morsabit County is home to the Elmolo tribe, one of the oldest but smallest communities in Kenya. This alkaline lake promised life for Angela Lenapir and her community. But rising waters are making things very difficult. Samaki na itangu maji kwe zime raise sasa, samaki na pungua. Juu sasa na joa nasema nets, isi zenye tunatumia, kwa deep water sinakuja juu. Samaki na joa ina float. Haipati sasa kushika manets kama isi kidogo dogo. Many families have been torn apart, and if water in Lake Trukana continue to rise, everyone in Komoto village will be driven out. A community that was living in a peninsula has found itself on an island. There are still people living here in the traditional quarters. Komoto village has been sinking due to soil erosion and rising sea levels. Sea levels are rising worldwide as the temperature in the atmosphere increases, causing ice in the poles to melt. Scientists attribute the increase to the rise in greenhouse emissions, especially carbon dioxide. More Omo River itself used actually to, 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 to flow into the ocean, into the Indian Ocean. But now because of the volcanic shim, this has now been confined. And therefore the, the waters are just being, uh, it's a basin that is just receiving water and they're not being able to release water. And then there are two dynamics that could be happening. Either we have too much rainfall in the areas of these rivers, and then a lot of water is coming out and less evaporation. That can immediately uh, increase the water resources. And then we also have a problem of uh, 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 
possibly tectonic uh, dimensions, but we have not measured the tectonic dimensions to find out what is, uh, whether that is true, it could be playing a role. As scientists continue looking for answers, Markle and Apir and her community can only tell of the challenges brought forth by these waters. She has been here for two hours. Her child is sick and she has to cross to the mainland to access a health facility. Finally, fuel is brought and the motorboat can now cruise for the mainland. Lenapir says on many occasions children have missed crucial treatment due to boats lacking fuel. <laughs> While Vision Kenya is helping villagers of Komote cope. We are targeting 300 households, but specifically also focusing on the El Molo community to make sure that they have access to cash because people have lost their livelihoods. So we are distributing cash through cash transfers to ensure that they are able at least to put food on the table and use those means to start regaining their livelihoods. When the sun begins to set in the west, children of Komote village have to embark on a journey back home, back to the new island of Komote. This is the Kenyan historian.